three thousandths of a second. So when the goose sets his sights on Alistair Craig's NCAA three thousand indoor three thousand meter record of seven thirty eight fifty nine at the Dave and Hemery Valentine Invitational at Boston on Saturday, we should have expected it to be close. As you can see, Jared the Goose is a sit and kicker. Um, this is like. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm back to another video. Uh, so before we jump into today's video, I did to say, I hope you enjoyed the last video I posted to you guys of my first impressions on the Nike Air Zoom Victory Track Spike. Uh, I really enjoyed sharing with you guys um, all my first impressions on the upper, the midsole, the outsole, the tread, and the spikes, the laces, its uh, longevity, and how I think it'll perform on the track. Uh, I really enjoyed telling you guys all about um, everything I thought about it, how it performed, the longevity. Once again, I'm hoping the spike lasts me at least a good one and a half to two years, maybe even three years, hopefully, um, but I'm hoping. And uh, I even said it's going to perform really well. I'm super excited to get on the track this season, try out these spikes, and um, yeah, beat them up, run fast, and uh, stick around for updates. I will always update you guys. Um, whenever I have meet recaps or I run the spikes, I will update you guys on how the spikes were. Uh, you yeah, guys, so that's probably going to wrap it up for this first block of the intro, and now as we go into our second block of the intro, the topic for this video. Uh, so in today's video, if you guys have caught up on the latest running news, uh, from I would say about the last week, week and a half, um, maybe even two weeks, probably, the mostly in the last week, um, you heard that a ton of American records and collegiate records went down. So in this video, we are going to be discussing some of the American records and collegiate records that have gone down. Specifically, we are going to be discussing four. We're going to be discussing Gabriella DeBus Stafford's um, North American five, Indoor 5K record. We're going to be discussing Elise Cranny's American Indoor 5K record. Um, both these records are actually held by Shalane Flanagan, a three-time Olympian. So uh, that was really impressive. We're going to be talking about Yared Nagus's, um collegiate 3,000-meter indoor record. Um, he's also an amazing athlete. And probably my favorite and the best, we're going to be talking about Grant Fisher's American Indoor 5K record. Now, all these four records, we uh, sadly, I wasn't able to get videos for you guys on YouTube. This would be copyright infringement, and I would have to reach out to the creators and uh, ask for permission. That would take a while, and most likely they probably wouldn't get back to me because I'm not a I mean, we're not, this channel isn't really the biggest channel yet, so they probably wouldn't even know I asked them. So articles don't give me copyright infringement, but videos do. So we are going to be having, um, we have three articles. One's going to include two, um, one's going to include two records, and then the other two are just going to be one. The one that includes two is going to be uh, Gabriella DeBus Stafford's and Elise Craney's uh, 5K indoor records. I couldn't find one on just Elise Craney, so we had to combine them. Jared Nagus will have his own article, and Grant Fisher will have his own article. Uh, so we will go through the articles. I'll try to make it not too long for you guys because I know sometimes I can go overboard and make it a little too long. Um, but I will try to give you guys as much information as I can, not make it too long, and still have fun with it. Uh, you yeah, guys, so that's probably gonna wrap it up for this first block of the, uh, that's probably gonna wrap it up for this intro of the video, and now let's move into our first block of the video, um, discussing Gabriella DeBus Stafford's and Elise Cranny's indoor 5K records. All right, guys, in this first block, in this first block of the video, we're gonna be discussing Gabrielle DeBus Stafford's and Elise Cranny's North American and American records. Uh, so before we get started, let me just move my camera for a second for you guys. Uh, I would think, like to thank Let'sRun.com. Um, I am using, all three articles are written by them on their website. Uh, so shout out to them. All these articles, I skimmed through them all, uh, briefly, just so that you guys get, a, just so I could get a feel for what I'm telling you guys, and forget, get a feel what I'm going to hear from this art, from these articles make sure they're good articles good sources and uh yeah so let's run.com shout out to you guys uh for writing up these articles and um i'm impressed and excited to read them uh yeah guys so that's probably all i have to say for that and let's get straight into the article uh so the title of the article is gabrielle de bus stafford 1431 which is her time and elise cranny 1433 which is her time blitz national 5k records in boston that's not wrong these 
woman destroyed North the North American and American records, both hold both held by a three time Olympian Shalane Flanagan, by the way. Um, they absolutely destroyed them. They destroyed them by I think Gabrielle DeVos Stafford destroyed the North American record of Shalane Flanagan by fourteen seconds. That is ridiculous. And I think Elise Cranny destroyed it by like almost ten seconds. That is insane. So um yeah, let's get up let's get a move on. Uh, shout out to the author of this article, Jonathan Galt. Again, I will be putting links to all three of the articles down in the description, so go check them out on your own if you want to. So, uh, let's get straight into it. First paragraph, Boston. So they ran this meet at Boston University, just to give you guys a uh, feel for where it was. With two kilometers to go in the women's 5,000 meters at tonight's David Hemery Valentine's Day Invitational at Boston University, like I told you guys, there looked to be a very possible... The, a very real possibility that Shalane Flanagan's North American record might endure one more night. It did, and it went down way sooner than we all thought. Monday marked the 13th anniversary of Flanagan's record of 1447.62, a mark set so long ago that Flanagan said recently she forgot she still owned the record. That's how long ago she said it. She said it 13 years ago, and she forgot she owned the record. And that is... The, and that... And when U.S. champion Elise Cranny passed 3,000 meters in 857.41, in five seconds slower than the record pace, by the way, it seems quite unlikely that Cranny would break the record by more than 14 seconds and not even win the race. So um, Cranny did not end up winning the race, but the record definitely got broken. Yet through a through a combination of super track, super spike, super super track, super spikes, and no small amount of talent and hard work, Cranny and and her Canadian Bowerman Track uh, Club teammate, Gabrielle DeBus Stafford, blitzed the last 10 laps and wound up smashing Flanagan's continental and national records. DeBus Stafford overtaking Cranny on the last lap to win in 1431-38 as Cranny settled for second in a huge American record of 1433-17. Let's go back for a second. And Flanagan's record was 1447-62. So this is her North American record, 1447. Gabrielle DeBus Stafford ran 1431. That's ridiculous. I mean, think of that's almost, that's like a four, that's a, um, over a 14 second difference. That's crazy. And for Elise Cranny, she also destroyed the record with a 1433.17. And, um, by the way, she went through it five seconds slower than the record pace that Flanagan had run to win, uh, run to, um, run that, uh, American record. So that is really, really impressive. Um, next paragraph. The closing splits were scarcely believable. A week ago at the New Balance Indoor Grand Prix, DeBus Stafford had run 833.92 to take 12 plus seconds off the Canadian Indoor 3000 meter record. Tonight, she ran her final 3K in 18 and 830.83. So let's go back. DeBus Gabrielle DeBus Stafford ran in a, a Canadian 3,000 meter record in 833. So that is three seconds slower than her 3K split, her last 3K in a 5K. She beat her own record by three seconds in a, in a race that was a mile, almost a mile and a half longer. That's crazy. Here's your reminder. You're not going to run three seconds faster in a longer race than you would in a shorter one. So that's impressive. Almost as fast as as the open personal best. Sorry, let me restart that. Almost as fast as the open personal best of Jenny Simpson, 1829-58, and Shannon Rawberry, 1829-93, two recent American superstars. Uh, Jenny Simpson, I think, was an Olympian uh, one year. And Sean and Rodberry, I don't know, but I could probably do research on her and get uh, you guys some information. Included in that 1830-83 was a final 1,600 meters of 425-72 and a last lap of 3081, which was enough to drop Cranny, who had opened up a 10-meter gap on DeBus Stafford with 800 meters to go, but had no answer for the Canadian's kick. As I just said, Cranny opened up a 10 meter gap with 800 meters to go, and that's hard to make up, especially on an indoor track where you're constantly just turning and turning and turning. 10 meters is a lot to make up anywhere, never mind on an indoor track. And uh, her her final 1600 meters, can we talk about this for a second? And her less in her final lap, 425.72 for a 1600 meters. That's almost a mile. So if she were to take that mile, that'd be about a 430 mile, guys. That is insane. Like, 
people don't understand how fast a 430 mile is, and we have to appreciate more how quick that actually is. Her last lap, 3081, she ran a 200 meters on an indoor track that was probably as humid as ever, and she ran 3081 after a 12, after, um, not 12, even longer, uh, no, sorry, yeah, it was like, no, she ran like 24 laps of that 200 meter indoor track, and she still managed to close in 3081, crazy. Craney's American record was well deserved, as she was one of the, as she was, as she was the one who started dropping 33 second laps after a string of 35s and 36s in the early going, and her closing splits, 1832-43, her last 3k, 8-4-27-81, last 1600 meters, were almost as fast as the bus Stafford's. So, I mean, you, you saw this, she, she closed off her last lap in 33 seconds after running 35s and 36s basically the entire way. I can't run a, I can barely run a 40 second 200 and 33 seconds for them was probably a slow 200. They were probably like moderate pace. Crazy. Behind the record breakers, there was a slew of personal bests as the tradition of a, of it, bought, of it, as a, as, Sorry. Behind the record breakers, there was a slew of personal bests, as it, as it is a tradition at Boston University. Olympic silver medalist in the, uh, in Courtney Ferrix, who was third in 1448-75, moving to number four on the all-time U.S. indoor list, with Providence alumni Molly Padlino, now running for New Balance Boston, clocking a 12-second PB of 1502-63 for the for fourth. So Courtney Ferrix, her, uh, she's the Olympic silver medalist in the 3000 meter steeplechase at Tokyo this year. And she ran a personal best of 1448. So she was really close. And, um, Padlino, who clocked a, uh, 12 second PB, which is a l- amazing amount if the 1502 NCAA in outdoor 5000 meter champion Ellie Hines lowered her PB from 518 to 503. In fifth, as the top five all easily surpassed the World Outdoor Championship standard of five ten. So these all these five women could all go to the out, the World Indoor the Outdoor World Championships, and they ran on an indoor track. Normally, you're going to run faster times outdoor because of the wind and wind aid and everything else. They all run it on the indoor track, which is ridiculous. So um, I mean, it's just it's crazy how just like. It, it's just insane because they say Boston University has one of the fastest tracks out there and they're not wrong because it really does have one of the fastest tracks out there. And I'm super impressed. Congratulations to, um, Elise Cranny and Gabrielle DeBus Stafford for breaking North American and American records in the indoor 5000. Congratulations to everyone who ran personal best on this track. I can't wait to run on this track eventually. Um, but congratulations to everyone who ran, got a PB and, um, finished the race. Uh, yeah, guys. So that's probably going to do it up for this first block of the video. And now let's go into our second block of the video. Um, Yared Nagusa's 3000 meter collegiate record indoors. All right, guys, in the second block of the video, we're going to be discussing uh, Yared Nagusa's uh, indoor 3,000-meter NCAA record. Um, so once again, shout-out to Let's Run.com uh, for putting out this great article, and uh, it is actually the exact same author as the last article, too. Shout-out to the uh, Let's Run.com and this author. These two articles have been amazing. We love the last one, and I am excited to read this one. Uh, so let's get right to it. So let me move my camera out of the way for you guys. Um, Notre Dame's Yared Nagus runs... 738-13 to set a new NCAA 3K record. Um, so Yared Nagus is no stranger to the spotlight. Um, he has made, I think they say in this article, he's, I think he's made the Olympic team before. Um, I have to go back and check though. I do know he has made some pretty major competitions. He, uh, came in second at the NC, at the 2021 NCAA Outdoor Championships over the 1500 meters. He has also won numerous NCAA national titles. Um, has, I think he's running cross country quite a few times, uh, so it's impressive, but let's get Therese to it. So, uh, this is actually the same meet that, um, all these, are uh, all these records were set, these four records were all set in the same meet, um, so Boston University track. Yared Nagus likes to cut it close. When he anchored the Notre Dame men's, men to victory in the distance medley relay at the 2019 NCAA Indoor Championships, he held off Stanford anchor Grant Fisher by one, by point one five of a, point one five, 
0.15 of a second. When he won the NCAA 1500 meter title later that year, the margin was even smaller, just three thousandths of a second. So when the goose sets his sights on Alistair Craig's NCAA 3000 indoor 3000 meter record of 738.59 at the Dave and Hemery Valentine Invitational at Boston on Saturday, we should have expected it to be close. As you can see, Yuri the Goose is a sit and kicker. Um, this is like Cole Hawker. This is um, a lot like Cooper Tier as well. Um, but he is a sit and kicker. You saw Grant Fisher's actually uh, the the man who uh, broke the indoor 5K record. But I mean, you saw 0.15 of a second. That's not that big. But compared to his three thousandths of a second later that year to win the NCAA 1500 meter outdoor title, that is crazy. Like three thousandths of a second. That's probably the one of the closest margins of victory in sprinting history. Never mind distance running history. Nagus delivered drama and Nagus delivered the drama and delivered the record using 5803 final 400, 28.52 last lap to duck under Craig's mark, clocking 738.13 at a time that also moves him into uh, seven time on the all time U.S. indoor list. The 22 year old Notre Dame senior now has quite the resume. Two NCAA titles and counting, two NCAA records. He ran through. 334.68 to break the outdoor 15 last May and birth on the 2021 U.S. Olympic team in the 1500 meters. Once again, I, I told you guys that he did make the Olympic team. But, I mean, you, if you see, his the guy's mark was 738.59, and Yared the Goose broke it by a few tenths of a second, maybe, I don't know, four and a half tenths of a second. So you can clearly see it. They're not lying when he say, when they say he likes to cut it close because he likes to cut it real close. There was actually no one near him when he crossed the finish line, but he liked to cut this record super close. In, in the immediate aftermath of his record-breaking run, Nagus was at a loss for words. I would be too if I just broke the collegiate 3,000 meter indoor record. Shortly after the race, Notre Dame's coach Sean uh, Clarkson FaceTime Craig, now head coach of Puma Elite Running in North Carolina, so that he so he so that the current and former record holders could chat. But when he when but when asked to recall exactly what they discussed, Nagus was in shock. He was really happy. He he was really happy that I was able to to do it and just uh I don't know Nagus said trailing off that's funny because um I mean that that's crazy like I mean imagine like you calling up they actually said uh, I did re I'm gonna review um if you guys haven't seen it Kira D'Amato had broken the American um marathon record and the former one um I can't remember her name now, but the uh, former record holder for the woman she actually facetimed or she actually called her and congratulated her so that's funny to be fair, Nagus had he. To be fair to Nagus, he has had a lot to pr process. Nagus tested positive for COVID earlier that week. Oh my God! Thought he thought he said he didn't have it bad, and that it had minimal impact on his preparations. Nagus said that prior to Notre Dame's policy, he was still allowed to train by himself. But as a result, Nagus did not fly into Boston until this morning. The morning of the race, he flew into Boston. He had to test negative this morning in order to fly. Heading into the race, Carlson and Nagus told Nagus to be prepared to back off the pace if he wasn't feeling up to it midway through the race. But there was no holding back in his charge today. That's crazy. Nagus flew in the morning of the race. I think the race was at like 6 or 7 p.m. He probably flew in like close to like... I don't know, probably nine, probably uh, like nine ten a.m. Normally, that's not how um, runners like this prepare for their races. Normally, they'll get there probably a day in advance, go have some lunch, have some dinner, prepare all that day, and get ready. He flew in that morning, so I'm genuinely impressed just because he flew in that morning. I'm not the kind of person who let, lets those kind of things excuse excuses bring you down. The goose said. That's impressive because most people will probably say, oh, I can't run today because I have COVID or I can't run this race because I have COVID. That's impressive. And I'm genuinely impressed. I'm going to skip over this paragraph um, with a halt stepping off at 1K. 
Actually, what does this paragraph have to say? There was also uncertainty about the pacemaking situation, but in the end, Eric Holt and James Randon, both doubling back from races earlier this day, did a good job of keeping Nagus on track as Nagus hit 1,600 meters in 405.81, just behind record pace of 404.58. So the pacing sound like is really good too, so that's also a helpful thing, especially when he had those issues leading into the race. With Holt stepping off the track at 1K, 233.47 for Nagus, and Randon departing at 1,700 meters, it was up to Nagus to bring it home over the last 6.5 laps. And while he was able to run 30.23 and 30.29 for the last 10 and 11 laps, 30.57 is the record pace, he slipped to 31.33 and 31.19 for laps 12 and 13. Cheered on by the crowd, however, Nagus responded with a 29.51 penultimate lap before bringing it home with a lean at the line to get the record. That's crazy because in that kind of situation, I've been there before. If you drop pace and you know you've dropped pace, that's stressful, especially at the end of a race. He was on like, I think he was on like the last second, second to last or last lap. That can get super stressful, especially when you're that in, far into the race. If you, if you lose that record by like two seconds, you're devastated because you couldn't run one second faster a lap. So, I mean, crazy. That's about probably where we're going to stop. Again, it's kind of running a little bit long, already eight minutes for this clip. Um, so. Yeah, but that pretty much uh, summarizes it up. Um, congratulations to Nagus, um, who broke this record. Uh, congratulations to everyone who ran this indoor 3,000 meter race, competed, finished, and um, yeah, ran some really, really fast times. Congratulations, uh, Nagus. Uh, yeah, guys, so that's probably going to do it up for the second block of the video. And now let's move into our third and final block of the video, Grant Fisher's indoor 5,000 meter American record. All right, guys, in this third and final block of the video, we're going to be discussing Grant Fisher's indoor 5K um, American record. Um, So, let, again, um, let me move my camera for you guys. Shout out to Let's Run.com and the exact same author of all three articles. Um, I am going to have so much, I'm having so much fun reviewing the articles. I hope you like the past two, and I'm excited to move for our last one. Uh, so, enough of me talking. Let's get straight to it. Uh, great. So, Grant uh, this is, sorry, this is the title. Uh, Grant Fisher, 1250, 1253.73, destroys U.S. 5,000 meter record in Boston. Mohamed, 1256.87, and Mark Scott, 1257.08, break Canadian and British records. I actually didn't know that there was, that, um, Mohamed, who was another Bowerman track athlete who trained with Grant Fisher, actually broke the Canadian record. And I did not know Mark Scott from, Brit- um, Great Britain, um, broke the British record. I think that British record was held by Mo Farah, who is don't, is a four-time Olympic gold medalist and didn't lose a single, I think, I want to say a single 10,000 and 5,000 meter performance in any major competitions, world championships, or Olympics until 2017. So that is insanely impressive. All right. So again, this is basically. Let me move my camera for you guys. This is basically the same. This is the same um, venue where all the records I've told you guys have been broken. Um, it's been Boston University. It's been on their indoor track. As the runners were getting ready for the elite section of the men's 5,000 meters at the 2022 Boston University David Hemory Valentine Invitational on Saturday evening, we should know that we were in for a crazy treat. We were. I did not watch this race live, but. I'm assuming that it was insane. After all, the slow heat had just been won in 1305. It's crazy when you think about it. Bowerman Track Club coach Jerry Sumbunger and had decided Woody Kincaid, the reigning 10,000 meter U.S. 10,000 meter Olympic champion, was not quite ready to mix it up with his B- uh, Bowerman Track Club teammates in the fast section, and Kincaid wound up running 1305.56. At the time, the second fastest indoor 5,000 meters by any American. That was quickly taken down by Grant Fisher and everyone else in that race. I think they said, like, the top 10 athletes all broke um, 1305, which is insane if you think about it. Just as crazy, Sumner was right because what he was – because what he was – sorry – I'm getting so tangled up in these words because what we saw in the fast heat was the deepest 5,000 meter race ever contested on U.S. soil, indoors or out. 
you don't see that a lot. I'll tell you right now, you normally do not see those big, sorry, you don't see those big competitions happen every single day. So that, I mean, to witness that in real life isn't crazy. Grant Fisher, a former high school phenom who won two Foot Locker titles, by the way, Foot Locker is the um, most competitive cross-country race out of the entire nation, the entire country's best runners, and broke four minutes in the mile while balancing soccer with running. He ran two, he did two sports, and he won two Foot Locker titles and ran four minutes in the mile, a feat that only, I think, about 50 to 60 high school athletes have ever done in history. So that's insane. Um, delivered on his immense promise and ran 1253.73 to win the race and smash Galen Rupp's American indoor record of 1301.26 and come up with a within a whisker of Bernard Lagat's American outdoor record of 1253.360. He is now the fifth fastest human ever. Ever, ever at the 5,000 meter indoors, one spot ahead of a guy named by the name of Elliot Kipchoge. This is crazy. We need to rewind for a second because this is so much information to take in. He smashed Galen Rupp, who is an Olympic bronze medalist, won the 2017 Chicago Marathon, and is one of the most successful U.S. marathoners in the country's history. He smashed his record by it what seven seconds or no eight seconds over eight seconds that is crazy and he was within a whisker of bernard lagat's outdoor american record he almost broke the outdoor american record in indoor track crazy he was also one spot ahead of as most of you probably know elliot kipchoge two-time olympic gold naturally yeah two-time olympic gold medalist four-time Olympic medalist all around gold, silver, and bronze has all three colors at the Olympic med- at the Olympic Games for medals. Um, has won ev- has won 11 or no, has won like 13 out of his 15 marathons he's ever run, only lost two, and um a slew of other amazing performances. This is how impressive this record actually was. It just shows you. Fisher's Bowerman teammate Mohamed, the Olympic silver medalist last year, was next across the line, running 1256.87 to break his own Canadian indoor record of 1304.6. Mark Scott completed the BTC or the Bowerman Track Club national record sweep in third, and like Ahmed, Scott lowered his own European indoor record, taking it from 1308.87 to 1257.08. In the process, Scott became the first man born in the United Kingdom and just the third born in Europe to break 13 minutes indoors or out. The race marked the first time that three men broke 13 minutes in the same race indoors only once before had even two done it in the same race. As I just said, once before, not e- almost two had done it in the same race. This race, the three of them did it. There were three records broken in this race and mark scott who was in um is great britain he broke he is the sec he is uh what what did they say he is the first man ever from the united kingdom to break 13 minutes mohammed and i didn't know they were all bowerman bowerman swept the men's 5000 which is crazy the times were so fast up in front that would be historic performances were regulated to also ru- ran status. Um, Emmanuel Bohr ran the second fastest time in U.S. history under Rupp's previous American record, but was only fourth. That's insane. He ran 13, almost 13 flat, only fourth. Sam Akin of Great Britain and Jonas Rissi of Switzerland both ran faster than the previous European indoor records, but had to settle for fifth and sixth, running 13.03 and 13.07. Once again, these times, five athletes were faster than Kincaid in the first race, who I think was like third. So they five athletes were faster than Kincaid, who didn't even come in first in the first heat. Crazy. Um, I'm probably going to, unless they have more information, but um, I'm probably going to stop there because, actually, no, I'm going to read this for you guys. From there, Fisher conducted a symphony of pain on the BU track, stretching the field out until Atkins, Scott, Ahmed, and 
Finally, Bohr had dropped, leaving Fisher all alone for the final 400 meters as the crowd roared him into the history books. His last 400 meter splits. So these are from like, um, these are probably the first, last couple laps. 60 flat, 58.95 with an exclamation point. 59.91, 58.74. Good for an otherworldly 357 final 600 meters. He probably would have run about a 402, between a 4 and a 405 mile. That is insane. This just shows you how Grant Fisher's record might be one of the most impressive records in U.S. history. He broke Galen's rep record. Uh, what? I mean, thir- five athletes went under 1305. Um, a slew of completely, like, unobtainable records before were smashed into smithereens. I mean, there's nothing else you could possibly ask for. What, is there anything else? Fisher's performance like almost every elite distance runner performance in the year 2022, must be placed in the context of its era. Early in the day, on the same track, Notre Dame's Yared Nagus, the Olympian and 2019 NCAA 1500 meter champ, broke Alice Craig's indoor collegiate record, which had stood since 2004. And last night, Gabrielle DeBus Stafford and Elise Cranny set dueling Canadian-American records. Cranny took taking 14 seconds off Shalane Flanagan's 1447-62 American record. This just proves, like, how insane Grant Fisher's record actually was and how insane all the records that were set today were. It is just crazy. I mean, like, this just proves that people are getting faster and faster and faster and faster. And it's just crazy how all this elusive shoe technology and training and diet it's all coming together to make amazing records um so shout out to grant fisher also shout out to mohamed and um mark scott a bomberman sweep crazy um also shout out to everyone who broke records everyone who ran this race and everyone who ran amazing amazing times uh you guys that's probably gonna do it up for this third and final block of the video and that's probably gonna wrap it up for today's video All right, guys, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you enjoyed listening to me uh, review Elise Cranny's and Gabrielle DeBus Stafford's um, American and North American indoor records, um, both broken, both held by Shalane Flanagan before, and they both broke them by incremental amounts. Crazy. Jared Nagus's indoor 3,000-meter uh, collegiate record, which he also just which he also destroyed by um, a few tenths of a second. Once again, this guy loves to cut it close. I love it. Makes for a great race. Congratulations to him. And last but not least, probably my favorite to review with you guys, Grant Fisher's, um, and the longest clip, which also shows you probably why it's my favorite, Grant Fisher's indoor 5K American record. This one was crazy. It was insane. Five guys went under um, 1305. That is ridiculous. I mean, it just proves that diet plans and training and shoe technology and um, everything else have just gotten so much better over the decades that it's it's crazy to think that we're already at the point where, I mean, records are dropping under 13 like it's nobody's business. So, I mean, it's just so impressive that these guys can do this. Like, I, I could never do this in my wildest dreams. Even if I could drain all my life and I may be able to do it once, they're doing it like it's absolutely nothing. And they're pro- I mean, I'm sure we'll see them do it uh, tens of hundreds of hundreds of times. I mean, like, who knows? Like, this is so, it's so fun to think about the future and how people are going to just get faster and faster and faster and faster. Uh, so congratulations to Elite Cranny, Gabrielle DeBus Stafford, Jared Nagus, um, Grant and Grant Fisher for breaking all these records. Also, congratulations to everyone else who ran these all these races, broke all these records. There were so many records broken in uh, this one meet. It was insane. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that. Ah, uh, stick around in his quote, and you guys are going to love it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Have fun. Um, keep running. Enjoy life, and peace out, guys.
Hey, what's up, guys? I'm back to the video. Uh, so before we jump into this video, I did say, I hope you enjoyed the last video I posted for you guys about my first impressions on the Nike Air Zoom Victory Track Spike. Uh, sorry I made a few mistakes in the last video. Um, I forgot that when I'm filming weeks in advance, um, I was actually, I think it was Fudgical. Uh, yeah, I think it was Fudgical I mentioned it. I filmed that one like a week in advance, so it's hard for me to remember which one I had, uh, which video I posted last for you guys. Um, but I did post at the top of the screen at that one, um, mess up, uh, this was, uh, this video. Why did I mess up on the first clip? Alright guys, in this first block of the video, we're going to be discussing Gabrielle DeBus Stafford's and Elise Cranny's North and American record. North American and American records. Uh, so before we get started, I would just like to... Come on. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed uh, listening to me review um, Elise Cranny's... Uh... Why? Why am I keep getting these clips so wrong? It's so annoying and frustrating.